Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at the 2022 Senate map based on the betting markets. Oftentimes, the betting markets can be a very good indicator as to how competitive a race is, and also a very good predictor as to which way these states vote. And so if you look at a state like Georgia, the markets really have been very volatile recently for the Republicans. A lot has been going on in these markets. If you look at the markets from around the summer of 2021 until the month of June this year, the markets were pretty stagnant for a very long time. How However, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen a lot of activity, and so that is why in this video, I will be updating you guys on the 2022 betting markets for this year's Senate elections. If you look at the Senate map here, the Senate elections really are very even between the two parties. If you look at the states with no betting markets, these are these very solid states that I have already filled in. We have 41 seats for the Republicans, 41 for the Democrats. These are the 18 most competitive races. These are the states in which we have betting markets in, and so right now, both parties have have a very significant chance at winning control of the upper chamber after these midterms. And so I'm going to start off with the state of Washington. In the state of Washington, Patty Murray is running for her sixth term in office, and Tiffany Smiley is the Republican that is going to challenge her this November. If you look at all the statistics here in Washington, the Democratic Party does have a significant advantage in this race. However, given the national environment and also the fact that Patty Murray has not always had the strongest victories in Washington, the race is likely to go into a likely margin. I do not think Patty Murray is going to win by over 15%. However, it is almost guaranteed that she is going to win her seat nonetheless. Currently, Patty Murray has a 92% chance of winning, and if you look at this map here, this will be the first state on this map, and it will be a likely state for the Democrats, and so basically how I'm doing the margins here is anything over 95 is going to be solid, between 75 to 95 is going to be likely, 60 to 75 is going to be lean, and of course between 50 and 60 is going to be tilt for either party. Now moving down south to the state of Oregon, we also have have a pretty non-competitive race here with Ron Wyden running as the Democratic incumbent. Ron Wyden will be running for another term in office and he is expected to defeat Joe Ray Perkins who is the Republican nominee. As you can see here, he has an overwhelming 96% chance at victory this November. So Oregon here is going to be very solid for the Democratic Party. Now in the state of Nevada, this race is going to be much more competitive than the other two that we just went over. In the state of Nevada, it will be between Catherine Cortez Masto as the Democratic incumbent and Adam Luxalt, who is the Republican nominee. I think Luxalt is an electable candidate, even though his stances on things like abortion are not popular. I think that he is a lot more electable than someone like Blake Masters in Arizona or Herschel Walker in Georgia, or especially Mehmet Oz in the state of Pennsylvania. So I think that Adam Luxalt is an electable candidate. I think he can win over independence, but no matter what, it is going to be a very close race between Cortez Masto and Luxalt here in the state of Arizona. The race is is going to be, I think, one of the closest ones on the ballot. If you look at the odds here, the Republican Party currently has a 57% chance of winning, 43 for the Democrats. I mean, this is down significantly for the GOP from late June when they had a 64% chance of winning. And the Republicans' odds did not go down because Roe v. Wade was overturned, even though Nevada is one of the most pro-choice states in the country. It was because Adam Luxalt came out very supportive of Roe v. Wade being overturned. That is what ended up hurting him. And that is why his numbers dropped just in a few days from 62% all the way down to 51 and this race at this point is almost a coin toss but the GOP still does have a very slight advantage so currently in the state of Nevada it is going to be tilt for the Republican Party with Adam Luxalt as the GOP nominee now you can visit my website at paelectionhq.com we have a Senate forecast currently up a governor's forecast will be added very soon and we have individual pages for every single Senate race on the ballot this November. So make sure you check that out. The link is at the very top of the description below as well. So looking at our map here again, I'm going to now go over the state of Utah. In the state of Utah, we have a surprisingly close race with the Republicans only having an 89% chance at victory here with Evan McMullen running as an independent. McMullen currently has an 11% chance of victory against Mike Lee. Mike Lee is, of course, the Republican incumbent in this race. And for the first time ever, the Democratic Party has not nominated a candidate for the Senate election in Utah. They have endorsed Evan McMullen, who, of course, 
course, is the independent that ran in the 2016 presidential election and was able to gain a significant following specifically in the state of Utah. So Mike Lee still is in a very good position going into his re-election. He is in all likelihood going to win another term in office, but Evan McMullen, I think, is going to pose a much stronger challenge than a traditional Democrat would. And so if you look at the odds here, the race is still heavily favored for the GOP, but it is only currently a likely race for the Republicans. In the state of Arizona, we have another very contested race similar to the race that we have in Nevada. These two races are going to be two of the most important ones on the ballot this November. Catherine Cortez Masto in Nevada and Mark Kelly in Arizona are two of the most vulnerable Democratic incumbents on the ballot. If the Democratic Party wants to have a chance at winning the Senate again, realistically, they will have to win at least one out of the two races in both Nevada or Arizona. And right now, the numbers in Arizona are not particularly the best. The Republicans currently have a 53% chance of winning. However, if you do look at the odds over the last couple of weeks, they have also decreased significantly for the Republicans. At one point, the GOP had a 63% chance of winning. Now, the numbers have gone all the way down to 52. So in Arizona, it is basically a toss-up at this point. The race is very close between both parties, but the GOP still does have a very slight advantage here in the race in Arizona between Mark Kelly and Blake Masters. Blake Masters, in all likelihood, is going to end up being the Republican nominee. The current polling between the two is very skewed in favor of Mark Kelly, but these are early polling numbers, so we will have to see what happens here in the next couple of months. Fundraising is also very much skewed towards Mark Kelly. And the big thing here is that the Democratic Party has been very successful in Arizona in the last couple of elections. If you look back at Arizona on the presidential level, you go back to just 2016, Arizona voted for Donald Trump by 3.5%. 2012, it voted for Mitt Romney by almost double digits. So the state of Arizona really has come a long way in the last couple of elections and now becoming a very much a purple state. And in 2020, of course, it voted for Joe Biden. And right now, the state of Arizona has two Democratic senators. So Arizona is not the state that it once was. But currently in the Senate race with Mark Kelly running for re-election, it is currently tilt for the GOP. And to finish off the western half of the United States, we have the state of Colorado, where Michael Bennett is running for a third term in office. Michael Bennett currently has an 85% chance at winning that third term term. If you look at the numbers here, 18 for Republican Joe Dia. Joe Dia has officially won the Republican nomination, defeating Ron Hanks. Joe Dia is much more of a moderate. He is not in the Trump wing of the Republican Party. He is not an election denier, and I think that is going to help him out on the ballot. Colorado, of course, voted for Joe Biden by almost 15 percent, and so I think Michael Bennett, just like Patty Murray, is going to face a pretty strong challenge this November, but in the end, he is still very much favored to come out on top. So Colorado will also be a likely state for the Democratic Party, and I'm going to now go over the state of Alaska just to get it out of the way. Alaska is going to be very solid for the Republican Party. No matter what, it will remain a red seat. In the state of Alaska, Lisa Murkowski is running for her re-election. The GOP currently has a 96% chance at winning. So basically what happens here in Alaska is there will be four candidates elected in a primary. Those top four will go on to the general election in November, and ranked choice voting will be used to rank the four candidates chosen in the primary. And so right now, Lisa Murkowski is the Republican incumbent, but she is facing a very strong challenge from Kelly Shibaka, another fellow Republican, but she is definitely on the Trump side of the GOP. Lisa Murkowski is not. She is much more towards the center. And so that is why Lisa Murkowski currently only has a 67% chance at being reelected, despite her party having a 96% chance of winning. So we're going to have to see if Lisa Murkowski can fend off Kelly Shibaka. She has fended off challengers in the past in 2000. 2010, she defeated Joe Miller despite Joe Miller actually winning the Republican nomination. Lisa Murkowski in 2010 won her race as a write-in candidate. It was one of the only times that a candidate has ever won through a write-in campaign. So Lisa Murkowski is definitely a formidable incumbent, but right now, no matter what, even if Kelly Chewbacca wins, it will be a Republican in office after this November in the state of Alaska. And so now with all of the Western states filled in, I'm going to now move on to the state of Iowa, where Chuck Grassley is running for his eighth term in office. In the state of Iowa, the race will be between Chuck Grassley and Michael Franken. Currently, Grassley has a 
a 94% chance at victory here. I think that Michael Franken is going to pose a strong challenge to Chuck Grassley. Michael Franken is definitely one of the better nominees that have been pitted against Chuck Grassley over the last couple of decades. Currently, Iowa is going to be likely for the GOP. Another likely state for the Republicans is going to be the state of Missouri. Currently, the Missouri primary is an absolute mess. On the Republican side, we have Eric Schmidt as the frontrunner currently. Trudy Valentine is the frontrunner for the Democrats. However, both candidates are not guaranteed at this point. Eric Schmidt could still lose the nomination to Eric Greens, and Trudy Valentine could still lose her nomination to Lucas Hunes. The primary will be in a couple of weeks, and that will be a big one. But right now, looking at the odds here, the GOP has an 88% chance at victory. 11 for the Democrats at this point in time. So Missouri will also be likely for the GOP. In the state of Wisconsin, though, the race is going to be a little bit less favored in favor of the Republicans. In the state of Wisconsin, we have Ron Johnson running for his third term in office. He currently has a 67% chance at defeating Mandela Barnes. The numbers are closer than it was before. At one point, the Democrats only had a 26% chance of winning. Now they're up at 34. But in the end, it is still a race that the GOP is heavily favored in with Ron Johnson as an electable candidate, even though he's not popular in his state, the state of Wisconsin is not exactly the bluest of states. It may be a purple state, but it does still favor the GOP very slightly. Joe Biden barely won the state of Wisconsin. Ron Johnson won by a pretty large margin in 2016, considering how close this race is. In 2022, with the national environment no longer favoring the Democrats, it will be very difficult for Mandela Barnes. So currently, the state of Wisconsin does favor the Republicans, and so that is why Wisconsin is going to be labeled as a lean state, according to the betting markets. Now, in the state of Illinois, this is going to be very solid for the Democrats. Currently, Tammy Duckworth has a 95% chance at winning her second term in office. She, of course, was first elected in 2016. She is the only Asian American senator currently in the Senate. And so that's why Illinois is going to be solid for the Democrats. And so now finishing off the Midwest here in the state of Ohio. Ohio is also going to be a big race on the ballot this November. In Ohio, we have Tim Ryan running against J.D. Vance. This is going to be, I think, one of the closer races of the year. I think Tim Ryan is someone that can pose a pretty formidable challenge against the GOP nominee in a state like Ohio. Even though Ohio is not the purple state that it once was, Tim Ryan is actually leading in the polls currently, which is not something that should be happening. We're going to have to see what happens in Ohio in the coming months, but right now the rate's looking pretty good for the Democrats just based on numbers alone. Of course, in 2018, Ohio re-elected Sherrod Brown to a third term in office, so, so it is not impossible for Ohio to elect a Democrat even on the Senate level. So looking at the numbers here, 84% chance for the GOP. Yes, the Republicans are still heavily favored here, but if we do get more reliable polling data showing Tim Ryan ahead, the race really could tighten up. So right now, the GOP does have a likely chance at victory in the state of Ohio. And finally, the final state in the upper rust belt here the state of pennsylvania this is going to be the race the democratic party has the biggest chance of flipping currently it is held by republican pat toomey but he will not be running for a third term in office so in pennsylvania the democrats currently have a 60 percent chance at victory you go back just three months and the gop had a 60 percent chance at winning this race Mehmet oz has proven to be an absolute disaster of a nominee for the gop of course Mehmet oz won the nomination with the support Support of Donald Trump. As you can see, Mehmet Oz is polling terribly against John Fetterman, and this is based on very recent, very reliable polling data. Of course, the polls in Pennsylvania are still likely to skew in favor of the Democrats just a little bit, but this 6.3% lead is very significant. John Fetterman currently clearly has the advantage in the Pennsylvania Senate race. He is also head in fundraising, and John Fetterman actually reported his numbers three months before the latest reporting from Mehmet Oz, so these numbers are going to be even higher for John Fetterman. And if you look at the last couple of elections, of course, Joe Biden won Pennsylvania on the presidential level. And in 2018, Bob Casey won his re-election very easily. So John Fetterman right now may become the second Democratic senator from the state of Pennsylvania, serving alongside Bob Casey. If you look at the odds, you're 60 to 44 Democratic Party with a clear advantage in the Pennsylvania Senate race. So Pennsylvania currently is going to be lean for the Democratic Party. And so now we have the two states here in New England, starting off with the state of Vermont, where Peter Welch is going to become the next U.S. Senator from the state of Vermont and only the second Democratic Senator in the state's history. In the state of Vermont, he currently has a 96% chance of victory. Peter Welch is the representative representing the sole district of Vermont. And of course, Peter Welch is going to succeed Patrick Leahy, who has been serving in the Senate 
since the 1970s. And so the state of Vermont is going to be very solid for the Democratic Party this November. In the state of New Hampshire, though, the race is going to be significantly closer. In New Hampshire, we have a race between Maggie Hassan and Chuck Morse. Currently, Chuck Morse is the frontrunner for the GOP nomination. He is behind in the polling. However, Chuck Morse polls better than every other Republican candidate in the field. And currently, Maggie Hassan has a 65% chance of victory. If you look at the numbers here just a couple of months ago, it was basically a pure toss-up between the two candidates. However, now Maggie Hassan's numbers have gone up significantly, and she currently has a 65% chance at victory in New Hampshire. So New Hampshire is going to be a lean state for the Democrats. Now we have three final races here in the southeastern region of the United States, starting off with the state of North Carolina. And currently, the GOP has an 80% chance at victory, so it is going to be 4-1 to one in favor of the GOP in terms of both parties' odds of winning here. The race will be between Ted Budd and Sherry Beasley. I think Ted Budd is one of the best nominees that the GOP has put up in these competitive races. Ted Budd is a very electable candidate. He is currently a member of the U.S. House representing a district in North Carolina. Sherry Beasley is the former Supreme Court Justice of North Carolina. However, right now, Sherry Beasley is simply behind. Ted Budd is in a much better position than Beasley. The polling does show Budd ahead only slightly, but the polls in North Carolina have been known to heavily favor the Democratic Party, and so that is why right now I do think Ted Budd is almost guaranteed to win his first term in office. But this race still can get closer if we see some interesting developments in the next couple of months. But right now, even though North Carolina is going to be competitive, the GOP has a very significant advantage going into this race. So North Carolina is going to be likely for the Republicans. In the state of Georgia, the race is going to be a lot closer, though. And of course, we saw this race earlier. Currently, Raphael Warnock is actually expected to win his re-election. He has a 55% chance at defeating Herschel Walker. I think this is going to be one of the most interesting races of the year. I mean, if you look at the odds just a couple of months ago, Herschel Walker had a 65% chance of winning, but Herschel Walker has just proven to be such a terrible nominee on the Republican side. There's no other way to put it. Herschel Walker is tanking in the polls. He is down in the polls now, and the worrying thing here is that the polls are accurate in the state of Georgia. They were very accurate accurate in the last couple of elections and so currently Raphael Warnock is in a good position going into his re-election and the state of Georgia currently is tilt for the Democratic Party and finally in the state of Florida of course it is going to go to the GOP with Marco Rubio currently having a 93% chance at victory looking at the race here between Rubio and Demings. The Democratic Party is likely to still pump a lot of money into the race I mean just look at the fundraising here but in the end Marco Rubio is going to be a very difficult incumbent to defeat and so that is why right now he he has a 93% chance of victory. So Florida is going to be likely for the GOP. So according to the betting markets right now, the Republicans will win 51 seats, 49 for the Democrats. But you do have to keep in mind that Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia are so close. It is basically a coin toss in all three of these states at this point. If you look at the odds here for the control of the Senate, the Republicans currently have a 63% chance of winning 40 for the Democrats. If you look at the numbers just a couple of months ago, the Democratic Party at one point had a 22 percent chance of victory. So the race really is tightening up here for these Senate elections this November. If you look at the amount of seats the GOP will control, it does sit at around 51 to 52. So the GOP is still a little bit favored, but you definitely cannot count out the Democratic Party at this point in time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you check out my website at paelectionhq.com. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.